What's going on, everybody? Casey here, uh, checking in. I hope everybody has been enjoying uh, the initial opening of the golf course and everyone's gotten out there uh, and swinging it well. Um, I want to talk today a little bit about uh, how we're approaching our practice um, and just clarifying some of the mentality as to what we're getting out of our practice and why we are practicing. Um, I think it's really important that we break our practice down no matter what you're doing, um, anything from putting to hitting a driver, um, but we're breaking that time down effectively into two separate categories. Um, the first category is cognitive, okay, and this is where any change starts. Um, and so anytime we're trying to make a change, we need to understand what we're trying to change and why we're changing it. And then once we have that prescription and we're going to go ahead and start practicing, we really need to understand that the goal of this first stage is really to develop feel, okay? And feel is so important um, as we get into the later stages and when you're actually going out and performing or playing golf. Um, so this is where developing feel is the goal of this first stage. And we can't get hung up on um, results at this point, okay? The goal of stage one, cognitive development, is not results, it is to learn feel. And we're going to use feedback to do so. So whether it's technology giving you feedback or an alignment stick or any of the drills that we've sent your way to have all these different types of feedback involved in them, we're supposed to be using that feedback to develop new feel, right? So anytime we're changing a pattern, the body and the brain is going to say, this is different. And that's great, but we need to start distinguishing what different is and what type of different is good and what we're looking for. And that's what feedback's for. So that's the goal of the first stage in that cognitive. Learn feedback, okay? Utilize the feedback to develop feel. And then once we get into the next stage of development, this is reactive, okay? This is where we're looking for the athlete to come out. This is more simulating what's going to happen when we're playing the sport, okay? We don't ever want to get caught in the cognitive way of thinking while we're trying to play a sport. The brain doesn't work like that. So when we're playing sports, we need to be in this reactive state. And that's something that's incredibly important, something that we need to practice, the ability to go from cognitive thinking about something, trying to develop a feel, and then switching our focus over to um, this type of reactive practice, which is really going to utilize you know, one really important feel to maximum to generate results, right? So the goal of the second stage in reactive is results. We wanna see if the feels that we're developing are giving us the results we want. If they're not, then we need to go back to the cognitive stage and develop new feel. But ultimately, what we're supposed to be doing through practice, developing feel with cognitive, translating that to the reactive state where we are able to use feel to give ourselves results, okay? So something that I wanna say is very, very important is that again, in the cognitive stage when you are starting development, you need to really avoid judging your results at that point, okay? The results should be how something feels, not what the ball flight was at any given time. And certain drills should actually have a negative results on your, negative impact on your results initially, but it should be teaching you a feel. So again, you really need to distinguish between those two things and utilize your time wisely. So for instance, when the driving range does open and we're able to go hit balls, you should be going up there and spending, say, if you're going to spend a half an hour on the driving range, spend your first 15 minutes in cognitive practice, working through a drill or two, trying to develop a feel. And then your next 15 minutes is going to be spent using that feel to generate results. You're going to be choosing different targets, simulating more of a round of golf. And you need to really be able to work between those two things. And it's very important that you can distinguish between the two in terms of how you're practicing. And then again, being able to set yourself in the right mindset when you go play golf. You can't be cognitively thinking when you're out there on the golf course. It's not going to work. Your brain doesn't work like that. It's not going to trigger any type of athletic movement. And things are going to be very difficult. So we really do need to learn how to use the reactive part of the brain to function, and that all starts with our ability to generate feel and practice that way. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, I'm hoping that you know we've thrown a lot of drills you guys' way, that hopefully this is something that can help sort of clarify and put everything on a shelf. 
um, and help everybody as they organize themselves and start to look forward to more practice time as hopefully the practice uh, ranges will be opening you know within the next few months here anyway so um, hopefully everybody's uh, staying fit at home get out on the golf course have some fun we'll see you guys soon